17. The defendant was born in March 1970 and is 51 years of age. He works as a truck driver and at the time of arrest lived with his de facto wife and two sons. He has a criminal record involving driving offences in 1997 and a destroy and damage property in 2014. He came to police attention in September 2019 in the context of an assault charge involving a neighbour. So we will go through Matthew Reason's affidavit at the end because that forms the bulk of this claim and it is by his admittance that all of this was enacted under a command that he took control of. 16. The defendant relies upon Affidavit of Haley Lee, solicitor for the defendant, affirmed 20 July 2021. Affidavit of Todd Davis, affirmed 19 July 2021, outlining the role and reach of community treatment orders. Extracts from the defendant's OIMS case management records dated 20 March 2020 and 9 April 2020, which makes reference to whether the defendant should be assessed for a concern that he has, open quote, extremist views with peculiar ideation, close quote. It is common ground that no assessment occurred. 15. The plaintiff relies upon the following evidence. Affidavit of Patrick Mullane, solicitor sworn 12 July 2021, exhibiting two volumes of material as indexed and extracted from 13 volumes of material, which it is said will be tendered on the primary application. Affidavit of DSC Matthew Reason, sworn 1 July 2021, a detective in the, open quote, fixated persons unit, close quote. Affidavit of Senior Constable Alexander Clark, swore 9 July 2021, an officer in the, open quote, high-risk terrorism offenders unit, close quote, of the New South Wales Police. So we can see that Matthew Reason and this high-risk terrorism offenders unit have been working together in a bid to protect the state from some idea that it might actually be a foreign crown with no foundations in God that give it a right or line of authority to uphold the law that it attempts to uphold. It could then be said that any law that is made outside of the law is no law at all, as Justice of the High Court Gleeson stated in his documents. We can see that going through this, the Justice has been cautious not to outstep her oath at which she sits on a bench to. But at the same time, I see a slight little ignorance in the justice in relation to how power and authority through a line of authority takes precedence over what occupies it. Justices of the past have hinted to this very clearly in that as we've said, any law made outside of law is no law at all. It could be said that when the states joined this foreign power in Australia, in the Australia Acts 1986, when it made request and consent to the United Kingdom, that it left your power, and from that moment forward, any laws that it made were outside of your law. They had joined the auspices of a foreign power that had created Australia under the order of Australia and forged the Great Seal of Australia. They do not operate under the Great Seal of the Commonwealth of Australia as they did prior to the creation of this government. It could therefore be said that anything developed federally since 1973 is a law outside of law. It could then be said that the, the states playing party to that post-1986 
are in the same boat that are law made outside of law. And this is where we get to this conundrum that the justice is failing to observe in her statements relative to a curial overthrow of government. The hint there is, is that you were already overthrown and your line of authority exists underneath it all and without that line of authority, it cannot exist. Okay, so we will return back to that slide and Matthew Reason's affidavit later. Moving backwards, we come to this section of case law, which will then go back into the legislation, which will rush through, because we read it on the way down. 14. I gratefully adopt the summary of the principles to be applied at an interim hearing set out by Johnson J in the state of New South Wales versus Fired Preliminary 2020 New South Wales Supreme Court 1681 at 44 to 52. Quoting from another court case, which then quotes from other court cases, but the general consensus is, is that she's relying on this grouping of court cases as to her foundations in making the decisions that follow. We know that those decisions were to dismiss this application and um, refuse it completely. The task for the court for the preliminary hearing is to apply the statutory formula in sections 24.5 concerning the appointment of a psychiatrist and psychologists to carry out examinations of the defendant and section 27b concerning the making of an interim supervision order. So we can see here that the judge is specifically saying that I have to make a determination before any psychiatrist or so psychologist gets involved. And I'm going to make that determination based on the evidence of the state, and that being Detective Senior Constable Reason and his affidavit, along with his, along with his partner Senior Constable James Gatwood. The state failed to deal with these processes while the defendant was in jail, and the doctors inside this forensic mental health have no evidence to determine the risk that he will be to the community outside of that jail. They have no evidence whatsoever and they are scrambling at the last moment to stop what would be considered a lawful action on the outside from occurring again. That's the bottom line. We have the state of New South Wales trying to undermine the United Kingdom of Australia for the sheer fact that it doesn't like the curial standing that falls underneath it. It can somewhat prove that the state doesn't have a, a true line of authority in the matter. 